Okay, Christopher Hall, you need to start using your brain a little bit. Let's go over this comment here. This is completely fucking garbage. Everything in it is complete garbage. And you ought to be deeply ashamed of yourself. For your complete fucking garbage. If this isn't an attempt to resolve cognitive dissonance, are you talking about me instead of the arguments again? Am I being intellectually dishonest here with the question I asked myself? Eric, you were literally deleting co people's comments. That's a fucking lie. I deleted nobody's comments. And, in fact, I just approved more of yours. I know at least three people's comments that were deleted. Mine, Demon, Windows, and whatever her name was at the start of the now. Absolutely not true. There's zero chance that I did that. Zero. I absolutely did not. Christopher Hall, are you aware that there's more than one admin on this channel? Now, I don't think anybody deleted these comments. I'm quite certain of it. However, isn't it possible that some other admin besides me deleted those comments? Yet here you are wantonly throwing around accusations that without adequate cause again. Why is that? Is this a habit of yours to affirm things that have no justification? The only people who play macroevolution and microevolution are the religious. Christopher Hall, the fact that they're religious doesn't make them wrong. Okay? That's a genetic fallacy. You cannot say that because the Nazis made the trains run on time, making the trains run on time is bad. It's the same thing as arguing, well, all I see is bricks and I don't see any houses. All macroevolution is microevolution across long, longer time scale. Not true. Absolutely not. We know that species exist in stasis for most of their uh, duration of their existence on Earth. For example, the fern that's been around for 180 million years, uh, essentially unchanged, hovering around the uh, phenotypic mean. We know that during times when they purportedly grow from simplicity to complexity, that's not the case. They're not in stasis. They're not hovering on the phenotypic mean. We know that the drift barrier is at a very small population still. So all this evolution needs to occur while populations are very small, which means very rapid change from species to species to species to species. To species. If it's going to work at all. Okay, we know all of this. We also know that almost all of the genetic material within any species or any animal is not explicable by a selection, which is why the neutral theory came about in the first place. Then we know the neutral theory doesn't work because it fails to um, fulfill its own predicted uh, test. So it says, well, if I'm right, then biodiversity, I mean, genetic diversity will, will increase proportionally to population size. The more increase, the more mass of the population, the more genetic diversity within it. So that proves not true. Okay, so explain to me how complexity comes out of simplicity. Don't just say the same way that it doesn't, because in stasis, it absolutely does not. And we have to agree on that. There's no disputing it. So don't tell me it's the same mechanism that doesn't produce change uh, into new species, that doesn't produce speciation, that doesn't improve increased complexity. Don't tell me the thing that doesn't produce all those things is the same thing that produces all those things. Okay? Sorry. It doesn't work. With, a, with the vectors involved that the, the evolutionists have, have identified, it doesn't work. That's why you have all these competing theories. You don't have an explanation for it. Complex multivariant solutions are fine. I am perfectly capable and co uncomfortable with such. If you provided me multiple variables that do work in coordination, that makes sense mathematically, that makes sense intuitively, that makes sense to the biologists. When I asked a biologist the other day, when I talked to him in person, he couldn't give me a definition for a species. He refused to give me one. He said they don't have one anymore. Yet here you are advocating that you've explained speciation. Do you have a definition for species? You seem certainly confident that you've explained it. What is it? All speciation is when two groups diverge enough that one cannot breed with the other. At that point, you have two different species. Because you're using the breeding definition. Okay? So, what you're saying is that two finches that look almost exactly alike can be different species because they don't breed together. But a chihuahua and a great dane are the same species because they still breed together, right? So the question is, what is it that causes speciation? If it's not extreme variation within a breed, as we see in dogs, it's definitely not. So what causes speciation? We haven't been, if, we, if it were just a matter of, of breeding until they were different species, why, we would have done that plenty of times by now. We've bred all kinds of shit. We haven't created new species like that, have we? The scientists don't claim that, that when, when two groups diverge enough that one cannot breed with the other, then you have two different species. The scientists claim there is no definition of species. So, what do you, who are you with here? I'm not sure. The main reason may be unreasonableness and closed-mindedness, but it's not mine. 
This incredulity fallacy you keep accusing me of is not what I'm guilty of. The argument from credulity is a logical fallacy that occurs when someone decides that something did not happen because they cannot personally understand how it could have happened. See, I'm not saying evolution, I'm not saying speciation didn't happen. I'm not saying we don't have bio biodiversity of species. I'm saying your explanation fails to explain it. Okay? So, for example, a, a comparable example is this. I could say that um, heavy spring rains cause flooding. And uh, you could say that, that heavy ring, spring rains cause flooding. Heavy spring rains are the cause of flooding. And I say, but that doesn't explain flooding in the middle of summer. And you could say, yes, it does. It's just that some of the water has to sit around and wait in the air for a long time before it falls. Well, then isn't that summer rain? No, it's still spring rain. You can change as many of the definitions as you want. You're not going to get anywhere with it, okay? Your, your explanation doesn't make sense. It makes sense for spring floods. It makes sense for, speciate, for change within species without speciation occurring. It doesn't make sense from complexity emerging from simplicity. It just doesn't. I'm sorry. And it's not that I don't understand. I'm certainly not guilty of this because I'm not saying speciation didn't occur. You, if you don't, if you put this down here, you either didn't read it or thought you were going to slip this shit past me. Shame on you. You accuse me of intellectual dishonesty, but you put this shit down knowing that I'm not claiming biodiversity doesn't happen. I don't get it. It's not the same. It doesn't make sense. I do get it, and it doesn't make sense, and both statements are true. The argument from incredulity, again, fucking you idiot. You don't get quantum mechanics. Well, I most, mostly get it. Not the actual, all the math of it, but I mostly get the concept of it. But I'd be happy to teach it to you. So, what did you say here that was meaningful or at all true or relevant? Well, this is true, but not what I'm guilty of. This may be true, but is not an answer to the argument, is it? It's not an answer, okay? This is a nice analogy, but it's not what I'm doing. I'm saying, you keep telling me the houses began as small little huts and grew into big houses over time, but I don't see that happening. Even though we see evidence of a small house being built here before and another small house and a slightly bigger house and a slightly bigger house and a slightly bigger house, it doesn't mean that this biggest house grew by evolving through those stages of houses. Okay? So yeah, it is a different thing. Microevolution says, I can take this house that's built here and I can add on to it and, and remodel it and stuff. Um, Macroevolution says, and that's how we build brand new houses that are unrelated to the ones that were previously here. They're different fucking things. You've had speciation explained to you over and over. No, I have not. And biologists don't have a definition of species. So, what's your definition of species? Oh, yeah, that's right. Use the breeding definition of species. Great. So, if two species that are bred together, it become two different breeds, sufficiently different, they become different species. So why is it then that Great Danes and Chihuahuas are still the same species? Even though finches with tiny differences are different species. Why? Why can't we speciate dogs? After all, we've had plenty of generations to do it, based on what I've been reading. Right? We'd have to have. Since we know about stasis lasting for such a long time, we know that Many, many species began all at the same time in, the, in one of the various uh, expansion events. Um, so how do you explain it? It's not just a... Don't just say it's complicated. Don't just say evolution works in mysterious ways. Explain to me the countervailing impacts of the, the reality of population, namely that as populations grow smaller and individuals within the population grow larger, that the rate of change slows. Right? Now, whatever rate you want to put it at for the initial thing, for very simple creatures with very small populations, you might be able to get some movement there by the genetic thrift, uh, bottleneck, and founder's effect all combined with uh, the neutral theory, with everything else, you might be able to get a little bit of traction there until it hits, genetic, until it hits the drift barrier, which is a population of 100 or something. And then what happens? Well, then we can't explain it anymore. It doesn't work. Try to work it out yourself. Do some math. Show me how long it would take to get from yeah to yeah. Do something. Do something real instead of this bullshit attacking me and non-arguments and 
obviously fucking wrong accusations of fallacy, obvious lies that I would delete your comments. I want this fucking battle because you're wrong. If, if, if I were totally wrong and I had nothing to sustain myself, then maybe it would hold some water. But you're getting thrashed here, you're providing no arguments, and you're simply sounding like a fucking idiot. And you're sounding disingenuous. This bullshit, you know I didn't commit this. You know because it says right here that when someone decides that something did not happen because they cannot personally understand how it could happen. I'm not saying biodiversity didn't happen, retard. You know that. So who's being dishonest? Who? Is it me? Is it? No, it's you. So Christopher Hall, suck my fucking dick and learn something for God's sake.